With Grand Theft Auto 6, Rockstar has a chance to reinvent its flagship franchise from the ground up. These are the features that we think could breathe new life into the two-decade-old series. Now it's up to Rockstar to make them a reality. While Grand Theft Auto has blessed fans with some of the most depraved and memorable anti-heroes in gaming history, the series hasn't featured a female main character since Grand Theft Auto 2 came out on the Game Boy Color. Yeah, you can make female characters in GTA Online and you can always screw around with director mode, but those aren't part of the story-based campaign. A female Grand Theft Auto hero, a real one with their own backstory, personality, and wants and needs, is well past due. Not that we're surprised that it's taken this long. It's been 20 years since GTA's Game Boy outing, and yet Grand Theft Auto still treats women like sex objects, obstacles, and punchlines. We are women! Hear our shout! We are women! Have no doubt! We are women! We are free! We are Shut women. the f*** up! A female protagonist could go a long way towards righting those wrongs. And besides, Grand Theft Auto takes place in a macho, testosterone-soaked world. A woman hero wouldn't just be a nice change of pace, it'd give Rockstar the opportunity to tap into a whole new vein of satire too. Come on Rockstar, it's been long enough. Give the people what they want. Don't get us wrong, we freaking love Grand Theft Auto Online. What's not to love? It's basically a city-sized playground with an ungodly amount of guns. Even so, we're never going to forgive Rockstar for basically ignoring a sizable chunk of their gamer base by releasing exactly zero single-player DLC for GTA V. Yeah, yeah, we know, Grand Theft Auto Online did receive a few story-heavy updates like 2017's big Doomsday Heist event, which is great for people who don't mind playing with others. But as a good number of gamers out there will tell you, plenty of people want solo video game experiences. Remember how fun dangling that annoying-ass blogger out of a helicopter was in GTA 4's Ballad of Gay Tony DLC? And what about Red Dead Redemption's Undead Nightmare standalone? That was pretty nifty. When it comes to modern open-world games, a single-player DLC has pretty much become the standard, not the exception. And it's about time Rockstar gets back on board. Would it be too much to hope that Rockstar doesn't leave single-player fans out on the cold this time around? As far as Grand Theft Auto goes, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars is an anomaly for a number of reasons. One of the biggest? It flopped, and we mean hard. That's a huge bummer. Not only was Chinatown Wars a compelling throwback to Grand Theft Auto's top-down 2D roots, but its controversial, drug-dealing minigame was an absolute blast. In Chinatown Wars, different sections of Liberty City have different drug supplies, with prices that match accordingly. Once you've got the lay of the land, you can use that to your advantage by picking up product in neighborhoods where it's plentiful and unloading in places where it's high in demand. You can build a one-man drug empire. It's a system that would translate well to a mainstream Grand Theft Auto game. After all, the drug-dealing minigame combines open-world exploration, driving, and characters with colorful personalities. That's Grand Theft Auto in a nutshell. And if Rockstar wants to use GTA 6 to introduce a sadly overlooked minigame to a wider audience, we certainly won't complain. Grand Theft Auto games have all sorts of side activities, but when it comes down to it, you're going to spend most of your time driving cars and shooting things. Thankfully, GTA's driving system is solid. Its guns, on the other hand, they could be a whole lot better. Use a lock on targeting and gunfights quickly start to feel like whack-a-mole with all the fun sucked out. Turn it off and you'll quickly find yourself riddled with bullets as you struggle to cope with the sluggish controls and odd aiming mechanics. It's baffling. Rockstar makes games about shooting stuff, but after two decades, still can't manage to make shooting things fun. Grand Theft Auto's gunplay isn't just quirky, it's antiquated, and given how far the rest of the series has come, it stands out like a sore thumb. Grand Theft Auto 6 should bring a complete combat overhaul along with it. At this point, anything less simply won't do. Los Santos is huge. Grand Theft Auto Online's max player count is not. If you have an original Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 version of Grand Theft Auto 5, your multiplayer sessions are limited to a paltry 16 players. The enhanced editions double that number, but make two players into mere spectators. As a result, you can play entire Grand Theft Auto Online sessions without ever actually running into another player, which defeats the whole purpose of playing online. Now, there are two ways to solve that problem. Rockstar could make the Grand Theft Auto 6 map smaller, or it could let more players join multiplayer matches. Given that the former probably won't matter, the latter seems like the way to go. The technology is there. Battlefield 5 lets 64 players fight it out at a time. In Fortnite and PlayerUnknown's Battleground, 100 player battles are the norm, and those are two of the biggest games on the planet. They must be doing something, right? Now, in many games, small and intimate matchups are probably better than large scale free for alls, but Grand Theft Auto isn't many games. GTA thrives on chaos. You want to make things really crazy? Open the floodgates and let dozens and dozens of people play at once. Trust us, madness will ensue and it will be glorious. 
Technically, Grand Theft Auto 6 doesn't need to let fans play as police officers. Whether they're supposed to or not, they've already been doing so for years. While Grand Theft Auto 5's main campaign keeps players strictly on the wrong side of the law, Grand Theft Auto Online has become a haven for anyone who wants to put on a uniform, hop behind a police cruiser, and roleplay, make cops-like reality shows, and even mod the game to support their law and order fantasies. On the other hand, there's clearly a willing and passionate audience out there, so Rockstar might as well go ahead and include cop play as an actual feature. Besides, Grand Theft Auto has been making us criminals for over 20 years. Getting to see how the other half lives wouldn't just be a nice change of pace, it could drastically shake up GTA's reliable but increasingly familiar formula, and offer all kinds of new ways to enjoy Rockstar's detailed open worlds. Oh, and if you're worried that focusing on the boys and girls in blue might dull Grand Theft Auto's unsavory edge, don't be. American police departments have a long history of of corruption and violence. If committing crimes is your jam, you'll still do just fine. For years, a subset of Grand Theft Auto V players obsessed over the Mount Chiliad mystery. A mural adorned with a UFO, an egg, and a jetpack started the trend, and online communities devoted to unraveling the mountain secrets quickly popped up. Tech-savvy sleuths started digging through Grand Theft Auto V's code, discovering new clues, hidden secrets, and even special missions. Eventually, they found the UFOs. They dug up the alien eggs. The jetpack, however, remained elusive. Then the Doomsday Heist update appeared. The series of Grand Theft Auto Online missions seemed poised to answer all of players' questions. It didn't. Many dangling plot threads remained unsolved. Oh, the jetpack appeared, but it wasn't all that fun to use. And it wasn't a reward for uncovering Mount Chiliad's secrets like many had assumed. You could just head to the shop and buy one, for $3 million of in-game cash. By this point, it's become clear that Rockstar didn't have any kind of grand plan in place, and that any clues it doled out to its audience didn't add up to anything. It didn't have to be that way. The Mount Chiliad conspiracy proves that secrets are a great way to keep players engaged, and would love to see Rockstar embrace that with a Grand Theft Auto 6 mystery that pays off in a satisfying way. If players are going to work hard, reward them. They've earned it. Is virtual reality still a niche market? Absolutely. Would a fully featured Grand Theft Auto game be incredibly difficult to implement in VR? For sure. Would it make a certain subset of the audience vomit like crazy? Get your apron and galoshes ready. I feel the power! But there's no denying that a completely realized virtual reality-friendly Grand Theft Auto game would be extremely cool for anyone lucky enough to have the hardware to run it. After all, Grand Theft Auto V's first-person mode already proved how much more immersive GTA can be after a simple shift in perspective. Actually surrounding yourself with the digital city to wreak havoc in would push things even further. If Rockstar devotes its considerable resources towards making the next Grand Theft Auto VR friendly, we're sure that they could come up with something truly groundbreaking, and we can't wait to try it. Grand Theft Auto has always pushed boundaries. Usually, however, GTA couches its most unsavory elements in satire or humor. For the most part, characters act and behave like cartoons, so it's fine to treat them as such. Missions like friend request end in extreme violence, but that usually follows something more nuanced. In this case, a pitch-perfect parody of Silicon Valley culture. We've invented something no one else has ever done. Oh, I think someone's trying to talk with me. Hello? Franklin's paparazzo missions, which have you snapping photos of celebrities doing drugs and bumping uglies, aren't in particularly good taste, but at least they have something to say about fame and tabloid culture. But believe it or not, there is a line. Sometimes Grand Theft Auto crosses it. GTA V's By the Book obliterates it entirely. In the mission, Trevor Phillips tortures a suspected terrorist in an interactive minigame. The better you are at torture, the higher your end score. By the Book is gruesomely violent uncharacteristically realistic, and worst of all, its satire seems to go over most gamers' heads. Sure, it's awful, but it parallels real-world governments' use of such horrific tactics. And it pokes fun at the fact that, yeah, we get it wrong. A lot. Now, our friend here, he claims he doesn't know I anything. Don't, I don't know anything. I don't know. I already told nothing. Nothing. I don't know anything. By forcing players to mutilate Ferdinand Keremov, Rockstar makes them face these ugly realities. It's hard to watch, and it's bleak, cruel, and in sharp contrast to the game's otherwise light-hearted nihilism, but that's the point. All that said, By the Book is still pretty damn terrible. In fact, it's unpleasant enough that many players try to skip it. Some give up on the campaign entirely. Look, we're not squeamish. When we play Grand Theft Auto, we know what we're getting into. We're just asking Rockstar to stick to what it does best. Ridiculous, over-the-top chaos. Instead of sacrificing fun for, well, the horrors of our modern world. In the long run, the game will be better for it.
In the end, the thing we want most from Rockstar Games' next open world crime spree is a chance to play it with our friends, to talk about it with our fellow gamers. That means releasing GTA 6 on the Nintendo Switch. It also means that launch day sees PC gamers getting the chance to cause some mayhem from the start, add in a fully functional mobile version and cross-platform online play, and then we'll really be talking. If Epic Games' as Fortnite can bring gamers on every platform together in one online battlefield, Rockstar should push to do the same. Sure, Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto aren't on the same level in terms of scale, but at the very least, Rockstar should make sure that every type of gamer could enjoy its products together on day one, not a select few in limited ways. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.